Welcome in, everybody, with another edition of Bears All Access with Tom Thayer. I'm Jeff Joniak from News Radio 780 and 105.9 FM WBBM as we get you set for the opening kickoff. Sunday, September 12th, as we wrap up this week, uh, I can't take it anymore, Big Tom. I just want football. I want real football to see how the last six weeks have unfolded and what it all means for the Bears fans here in 2021. Well, Jeff, when you talk about real football, it's something that starts on Wednesday of this week because that's when real football starts. And every single football player throughout the course of time, they talk about the realism of that first practice that's dedicated to game planning for an opponent. So it's not something we're waiting till next Sunday night. It's something, Jeff that when you get onto the practice field, it's got to be for real. Well, with the guys who haven't played, uh, there are two days in the year when the, the speed cranks up. It's opening week of the season and opening week of the postseason. That's when the reality will hit them. <laughs> no question. Yeah, yeah, but, you know, the reality that's got to soak in in preparation for the game is understanding that, listen, you got to be ready for four quarters. This is not something that you're going through three preseason games and uh, you may play five snaps, you may play two series if things go well. Look, dude, it's a whole different frame of mind when you're ready for four quarters of 17 weeks of football. What is your frame of mind as now things are laid out? Uh, we still don't know some starting roles yet to be defined on the defensive secondary, but we pretty much know what the offense is going to look like. And how, how do, Let's take it one step at a time. Let's start on the offense. How do you feel about its positioning as it goes up against this Rams outfit? I think this is the right way to go about business for week one. You have the most experienced quarterback on your staff. You got a running back that you're really confident in, is willing, and has the role of all three phases of the running back game. You got playmakers in your wide receiver position with Darnell Mooney, Allen Robinson, and the rest of the crew. And then you have a heavy, deep room of tight ends, uh, guys that can really be involved in every facet of your offense, from short yardage to long distance. So I like what they put out there. I just need to see the development of the continuity of the offensive line to see how they can increase their role of importance on this offense. Let's talk quarterback. Ryan Pace was asked at his uh, news conference earlier this week what the best-case scenario for 2021 will be for the Bears. The best-case scenario is, is to, to win games with the, the roster that we have. We feel like we can. Like you know, we've, We feel like we've gotten strong in a lot of areas. We feel like we have increased competition in a lot of areas. So we believe we can win games with Andy and then grow Justin at the right rate. And Justin would be Justin Fields. Andy Dalton zeroed in on this first start. Yeah, I mean, I've been a great opportunity right here. I knew that coming in that I'd get a chance to start here, and that's my focus is on this year. The rest of my career is going to take care of itself, but, you know, my, my focus on what I'm doing now, and, um, you know, this, this is a, a big year for me, and it's going to, uh, for me, I've got to go just uh, play like I know I can play. And he can do a lot because he's seen a lot, Tom, and he's hoping for a quick start for this offense in 2021. Yeah, I think just some of the stuff that we've done in practice and some of the stuff that we've been implementing and the way our guys have been, been practicing and playing, I think that's been big for us to know the potential of what we can be and uh, to be excited about what we have. And you alluded to all that about what they have. He sees it. Players see it in him as well. And again, the idea that he has seen everything in now his 11th year. You know, Andy Dahl, he's prepared for what he's going to see in the Rams. He's prepared for the atmosphere when you talk about the difference in the cadences from, uh, you know, last year with no crowd to this year going in the, in there. And yeah, I don't know how hostile of an environment it's going to be because I think it's going to be a Bears heavy crowd. But again, it's got to be complimentary football, Jeff. This is not solely that what the offense is going to do. The offense has to start fast and put points on the board to allow their defense and Sean to sign new defensive coordinator to be a little bit more aggressive. So again, whether it's through the legs of David Montgomery in the running back room or downfield through the receiver tight end game. So I, I do think that it's got to be a real complimentary atmosphere from the Bears. So while that's going on, uh, Justin Fields is getting ready because uh, should there be a snap when Andy Dalton gets dinged or something happens, he's got to get out there and run the offense like he is prepared to do so. So the scout team aspect of it is part of the process as Matt Nagy laid out this week. That's real. And, and so for him... Um, what we'll have to do is, number one, mentally, you have to make sure mentally that you are completely prepared within the game plan with whatever that is. So calling the plays, understanding now that you're that we're rolling. Like So, 
you know, something happens or there's a shoelace or something, whatever, you got to go in there. Like there's no, there's no setback and it's go time. Um, so mentally you got to prepare yourself. That's easy. He can do that through, vid- through film and video and, you know, whatever it is that he does physically is where you got to be able to um, stay on top of that because you don't get the reps. And so where do you get those reps? Well, as your technique and fundamentals can still happen on the look team. That's where he's understanding. He stepped his game up with that. So now he's playing like a real quarterback and look team. So he gets it. He understands the why. That's that part and look team. But then we got to be able to go in between periods and he's got to get those physical reps. And then post-practice, get the mental and the physical. And we do some things with our younger guys anyway that we started last year where we're able to, to, get, some, to get some reps for them of our game plan. So all of that said, every week that goes by, Every play and minute that goes by, he just keeps growing. And then we got to flip has a great plan ready for him. What do you think, Tom? He's still going to have to go out there and run the scout team and try to be as challenging to the defensive sta- defensive players as he possibly can. But he's also going to have to live in that Bears classroom in being able to absorb this offense that they're going to continue to install throughout the regular season and make sure he has a competent and complete understanding of it. Until he goes in and he's the starting quarterback, he's going to have multiple roles throughout the uh, the early portions or do, throughout the season. That's Tom Thayer. I'm Jeff Joniak. Coming up, we'll be joined by veteran tight end. Veteran tight end, but a man <laughs> who made the 53 for the first time out of the gate. Jesper Horstead will join us. Thanks for listening, everybody. Thanks to our producers, Jordan Treadup and Dan Brilli. This is Chicago Sports Radio 670 The Score. Welcome back to Bears All Access, brought to you by IGS Energy. Choose clean energy for your home at IGS.com because every good choice adds up to a better world. Pleased to be joined with Tom Thayer, with Jesper Horstead, the veteran tight end. I love saying that. The young man's been here since 2019. Thanks for taking the time out. And, and you made the 53 for the first time, right out of the gate. What does that mean to you? I sure did, and thank you for having me. Um, it means a lot. I think, you know, when I come here, that's obviously the goal. And then it's just like tantalizing to be on the practice squad and have it be so close and to practice against the team every day and travel with the team, but not really be a part of the team and not really contribute on game day. Um, and so it's just something that's absolutely been my goal, obviously, since I wanted to join the NFL. And it feels very, very good to achieve it finally. You know, I, I really felt Saturday going into the game that you had made the 53-man roster. Did you feel that you needed the performance that you had to make the 53? I did, yeah. And um, I think part of that's just kind of my mindset. And I, I knew that if I had a performance like that, I'd be on the safer end. Um, but I did not by any means feel like I was uh, a shoe in on the roster you know, I just wasn't happy with my performance the previous game, so I, I just felt like I needed to put good stuff on film in a game, that third preseason game, and I knew I'd have opportunities. Right. You got 92 catches as a junior in college, and you got 72 as a senior. Was it better coverage against you, or were you not – or what, what was the difference between that year? The difference was I think we averaged winning games by like 35 points, so I barely played in the second half of my senior year. We went 10-0. <laughs> Really? Well, that's the the first undefeated Princeton team since 1964. Now, it's hard to go unbeaten no matter what level, right? So what was it about that experience? Uh, It's something you and your your buddies from that team will never, ever forget. They can never take that away from you. Yeah, for sure. It's a quirky schedule to only play 10 games and not have any playoff after that. So most of the time, unless you're the absolute best team, you're going to eventually lose a game. You know, for better or for worse, I think we all would have liked to compare ourselves to other talent in the FCS and even in Division One football. But, yeah, it's really something special to go 10-0. and 0. That was a really close team and a really talented team that has, you know, other guys on NFL rosters as well. So we're constantly uh, staying in touch. So does 17 games sound like a lot to you? When you think about 10-0 and 0 in college, you've been through a 16-game season. And now a 17 game, does it? Does that number sound like a lot? Off the bat, in comparison to what I did in college, I would say yes. But I also did baseball in college, and that's a completely different ball game as well where you're playing games, you know, almost every single day when you look at those minor league and they're playing 150, 160 games. So it's all uh, reference. But to me, I, 17 games is absolutely a lot, and that's not even counting playoffs. 
Jesper Horstead, our guest here on Chicago Sports Radio 670 The Score with Tom Thayer. I'm Jeff Joniak. Tell us your background from Roseville, Minnesota. Clearly a sports junkie, right? Growing up, Absolutely. you did everything. everything. And do you think all of that, and tell me everything you did in addition to baseball, made you a better football player? Yeah, I've kind of been pounding the table for cross training as I talk to younger athletes because I just think there's so much. Um, you can only develop yourself so much for a certain sport by just doing the same stuff over and over. You know, it builds incredible hand-eye when you're playing baseball and seeing thousands of pitches every day that are coming in at 90-plus miles per hour with some crazy curve. Like, you have to learn how to track the spin of a ball in a way that you might not just get if you're just running routes or playing catch with a quarterback. Um, and in basketball, it's about high-pointing and body positioning and finding open spaces and getting in front of a defender to block. It's very similar to, like, a kickoff return play. Um so I think that I'm always pulling in skills that I've developed in other sports as I'm out there playing, and I'm always just preaching to younger people. Like, I know there's going to be a lot of pressure from coaches to get you to specialize, and I know that it just constantly seems like we're going in that direction. But um, you can really, really, you know, expand your skill set by playing other sports. You know, when you see guys like Adam Thielen, another Minnesota sports superstar now, now you come in going, you go from the Ivy League to the NFL – do you track a guy like that, or was he off your radar? And, you know, you, you, the Minnesota, I mean, that's a heck of an accomplishment for what he did and now what you're doing. Oh, are you kidding me? I was at his very first <laughs> preseason game. I've never met him personally, but, like, that was the guy that I looked up to and, and frankly, still do. His story is unbelievable, um, and I love the way that he approaches the game of football. So there were a lot of times when I had to remind myself of, like how he was able to get where he is now despite a lot of setbacks and, and kind of just say, you know what, like I got to just, you know, stay on track. It worked for him. Like maybe it'll work for me too. When you talk about what you've been able to accomplish, special teams, was that in your role in college or were you exclusively such a high performing receiver that you didn't have to go to those lengths? Because that's the way that you were going to build your NFL careers, frankly, was being on special teams, just like the same thing for me. I was on kickoff return my whole career. Exactly. And I didn't play much in high school nor college. Um, part of it was an injury my freshman year when I think I would have contributed in those phases. Um, but yeah, that was a big, you know, learning jump too, and something that I feel like I'm exponentially better at than when I came in here two years ago. And you're, you're so right. Like that is so fundamental for me to uh, show what I can do in those phases to actually get to step on the field as a tight end, it, it totally comes second to being able to be competent in special teams and more than competent. Tight end Jesper Horstead, our guest here on Chicago Sports Radio 670 The Score. This is Bears All Access with Tom Thayer, Jeff Joniak. We've been here together, Tom and I, for 25 years doing this. Tom, obviously, an 11-year NFL career as a player, and a lot of guys try out for football as undrafted free agents. They think they want to play. They think they can do it. But then the reality starts to hit and the erosion starts to take impact almost from the rookie minicamp and on down. Maybe some doubt themselves and they don't want to do it anymore. Clearly, you are just the opposite. You came in as a converted receiver, projected to be a tight end with a 220-pound frame, and now you've packed on another 26, 28 pounds. You had to really want to do this. Am I on the right track or was there ever anything in your mind saying, gosh, I don't know. I'm an Ivy League guy. I I mean, I could be doing a lot of different things. <laughs> no, I don't think that ever really crossed my mind because I, inevitably Good. in football, you can't play it the rest of your life. Like there will always come times where I'll be able to fall back on my education and, you know, sit at a desk and do all that stuff. But I, my goal was always to keep playing sports as long as possible. And so it never really crossed my mind, even on the worst days of camp or, you know, yeah, at the worst times. I enjoyed your answer when you joined us in the postgame show after uh, what is uh, – it grabbed some headlines, your three-touchdown performance, obviously, and the catches were just phenomenal. We'll talk about those in our next segment. But uh, with that kind of uh, impact and that kind of direction that you are getting from Clancy Barone and, and, and Matt Nagy, your answer about, that, yeah, I, I deserve a spot on the roster. I need guys to hear that if I want them on my team. And that's what you gave us on Saturday night. So – that's been bubbling up in you for a while, hasn't it? It has. Um, like I said, it was something I have worked harder for than, you know, just about anything else I can think back on. 
and I really wanted my efforts to show on the field. And when they did, I wanted it to be recognized that like I was here because I felt like I can contribute to this team. And I feel like I'm now at a level that I can, you know, help the Bears win games. Uh, five tight ends on the roster right now. That's uh, somewhat rare in the National Football League. I know Miami has five. Another team has five right now. But uh, plenty of plenty of time on the field to get the ball in the hands of the playmakers. And the tight ends are playmakers on this team. We'll continue on with Jesper Horstead after a break with Tom Thayer, Jeff Joniak on Chicago Sports Radio 670 The Score. This segment of Bears All Access is brought to you by Athletico Physical Therapy. Visit athletico.com to request an appointment in clinic or virtually and start feeling better tomorrow. With Jesper Horstead, kind enough to spend another 10 minutes with Tom and Jeff here on Chicago Sports Radio 670. The score in advance of a weekend off and time to get back at it against the L.A. Rams Sunday night, September 12th. It's going to be a fun week up here at Hallis Hall. All right, uh, let's talk about all, you know, when you did the game tape. I don't know. Did you guys watch the game tape at all? even as a tight end group, or is that history? Because it's a heck of a performance, five catches, 104 yards, three <laughs> touchdowns, and he drew a pass interference penalty that seems to be forgotten as well because that's, uh, that's the hidden yardage. Um, or did you take a look at what you did? We did not as a group or team uh, watch that film. I think after that last preseason game, you really shift the focus to what really matters in that week one regular season matchup. Um, but I certainly watched the film, the good and the bad. You know, I was out there for a lot of snaps, and uh, – there's a couple I would like back, but overall I was really happy with the performance, you know, and I'm looking at more than just the the five catches, but I, I showed what I could do on special teams. I actually had some good blocks in there too, which I'm really proud of. Uh, so I watched it, but I don't think we did as a group. The skills that you develop as a wide receiver, um, how much has that helped you into this level of football? And is your speed significantly different from a wide receiver body to a tight end body? Wide receiver skills I think are – totally transferable. Um, As I'm running routes out there, it's the same stuff that I was coached on in high school and college. And now to have, you know, Clancy and Matt be able to even further that education, it's been, yeah, I'm I'm certainly a better receiver than I was when I played at Princeton or Roseville. I think maybe I lost half a step, um, but I think that's inevitable when you're putting on 25 pounds on the body. And it's a little bit different coming out of that three-point stance. But for the most part, I I lost a lot less speed than I expected, and I still feel like I'm pretty fast, and that's an advantage I have as a tight end out there. How long did it take you to learn a three-point stance? Because this is a real question, because I'm an offensive lineman, Jesper. I live out of a three-point stance. still does. When you're a wide receiver... When you're a wide receiver and you transfer that type of size into a three-point stance, how long did it take for you to feel comfortable in in a stance and out of a stance? Longer than I expected, frankly. It's an unusual stance. You know, I had done, like I said, other sports and track, and I've come out of stances before, but it's different when you need to be powerful immediately out of the stance and quick out of it, too, because otherwise the defender's going to have a step on you. So I would say, like, I didn't necessarily feel comfortable throughout that first year and then in that off season I was like this is something I need to be like confident and comfortable out of so I spent more time coming out of the stance you know anytime I was running on my own I was just like all right I guess I'm going to do it out of a stance this time last year really honed in on the practice squad and now feel very comfortable but it took longer than I thought really. Jesper Horstead our guest here on Chicago Sports Radio 670 The Score Jeff Joniak Tom Thayer so the hands the hands are big uh, that that's the aspect of your game. Yes, you can use your body to, to seal off a defender. You can run the right routes, but if you don't have good hands, they, they don't have a place for you in the National Football League. Were they always good, or have you spent a significant amount of time working on those hands? I mean, it's a given. You're going to work on it no matter what, but t- tell me about that story. Yeah, I think it's kind of been my strength as an athlete from the beginning, and I, I go back to the cross training that comes with playing multiple sports. And I'm going to throw an unusual one out there, but my parents had me playing instruments from the time I could walk all through high school. And I think that actually did develop my hand eye as well. I was playing piano, violin, bass, guitar, and I still do to this day. Huh. And I think it played a little bit of a factor. I think most of it comes from, like I said, baseball and basketball and obviously football too. But, uh, I think there's something there, too. Well, you know, you can talk to Tom's brother-in-law, oh. John Scully, who played center at Notre Dame, and they were roommates, and he's a concert pianist, right? Wow. And right. that's playing center. But you know. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's his whole life he's played music. You know, I know you look at me and feel sorry for my head of hair, so let's <laughs> talk about the ge- – I know. Let's talk about the Genesis because I look you up on on the internet. And everything, man, you got that Boy Scout haircut, and now I see you growing these flowing locks like uh, 
you know, Goliath, David and Goliath. So what's up with that? Um, <laughs> that's a good question. My last haircut was at the beginning of the previous camp. So last year's camp. And I didn't tell anyone about it. This is the first time telling anyone, but I was kind of just like, I don't think I'm going to cut my hair till I am on the active roster. Like I am just going to see what happens. I've never grown it out long before. Maybe I make it this year and no one ever notices, or maybe next year, or I don't know, hopefully not two years down the road, but, um, it was just kind of like an internal little goal and I didn't want to jinx it. I didn't want to bring it up and it kind of became fun and took on a life of its own. And now, you know, like the internet has a field day every time I'm out in the field because my <laughs> hair is so crazy. But, um, yeah, it's, it's fun. It's kind of annoying at times and it's probably going to get trimmed up a little bit this weekend. No not way. for sure. Um, <laughs> don't lose the juju. Yeah, it's true. It's true. I envy it. I envy it, man. Maybe not. Maybe not. Maybe <laughs> talk me out of it. So, uh, react from coaches and players to it. Uh, lots of good, good natured, uh, jabs here and there, or do you got a nickname out of this? Uh, a lot of good natured jabs. People definitely seem to like it. Um, yeah, I haven't gotten a nickname out of it. Well, I got a couple here and there from the hair, but none of them are sticking, thankfully. So, <laughs> <laughs> Jess Brewhorst, our guest here on Bears All Access. Uh, tell us what it's been what, like working with Clancy Barone. Uh, I love his personality. To me, it seems like he's a straight shooter. And then just the Jimmy Graham impact. He's impacted Cole. Cole apparently is um, is taking that to a new level as well. I mean, is that is that just what that room is? It's a great room. It really is. And it starts with Clancy. He, Like you said, he's straight to the point, a very seasoned veteran coach. And he just, you know, is always there as a resource and always there as a great coach, but does not overcoach. And I think that's one of the best attributes he has. Like anytime I go to him, he has a concise answer for it, but he's not going to spend 45 minutes describing something that, you know, I as a player can understand in a couple of minutes. I think he has such a good feel for that. And just the knowledge is off the charts. And I'm going to say the same with Jimmy Graham. It's been so... Uh, beneficial for me to have him because he's a pretty similar, not necessarily body type, but position wise, we're both, you know, like more pass catching receivers and he sees the game so well. And so like, like I think I said on the interview after the game, like all those three routes were stuff that I had talked to him before about what would you do in this situation? Like if it is man, how much are you really stair stepping to, you know, get yourself open on that? And he, you know, he's done it all. Like he's in the league for so many years and has caught so many passes, run so many routes that he's just a, a database for how to get open as a football player. And on top of that, has a really good knowledge of run game, which is something I'm always learning, you know, fronts and, and where to work on double team blocks and stuff like that. And he gets it from a receiver's perspective. So, yeah, I can't say enough of him. And, and there's more people involved, too. Like, it's not just those two. Jesse's a great uh, database and has been on a couple of teams, which I think is really helpful. You know, talk about stuff that's scheme and talk about stuff that's like, you know, what do you think about the way that we're being coached on this? Have you learned some other way? And, uh, yeah, JP is one of my best friends in the team, and Cole is just a, a star and knows a lot more than you'd expect for a second-year player. You know, Jesper, your touchdown catch and the rollout pass by Justin, did you realize that you were a real option in that touchdown catch, or was it just kind of a reaction because Justin threw the ball? Because I Jeff's call that night uh, on the radio broadcast was, you know, kind of unexpected excitement from what we see above, what did you think as the ball was coming in your direction? Yeah, I would say I wasn't really supposed to be there. I just kind of started playing football when I saw Justin was rolling out. And, uh, you know, I think, like I said in that interview after the game, I didn't really stop to ask questions or wonder why the ball <laughs> was coming my way because I knew I had a chance to make a play on it. So uh, not necessarily – <laughs> meant for me or how you draw it up on a card, but that's not how football is played anyways. And so I was right. just glad the ball was coming my way in the end zone. All right. <laughs> we, we've been having fun with the guys in our last, uh, last bit of questions. It's uh, we'll call it a five pack. All right. Five, five quick hitters. You opened the door good. with the instrument. So what's your favorite instrument and what's your favorite music? Um, and have you been in a band? I have not been in a band. Favorite <laughs> instrument is guitar. I, I transitioned from the other strings and now I find myself playing guitar a lot more. Um, I really think I appreciate all genres of music in the last year. I think I've especially gotten into classic rock that I maybe missed when I was younger or wrote off. And I've just been loving the, you know, the classic, you know, Stone, Zeppelin, all of them. So air go the long hair. Yeah, yeah perfect exactly. fit. See, you're morphing. Yeah. Yeah. You're morphing, <laughs> Jesper. Right. All right. Favorite book. Favorite book. Um, that's a good question. I think it's constantly changing, but I'll go with, uh, it's called Name of the Wind. It's a fantasy book, which isn't usually my 
genre, but it was just really well written. Proudest achievement. Hmm. Fifty three. Yeah, it actually might be. You know, like I'm trying to think of what I would have answered for that question beforehand, and I think it might be the 53. But that being said, it's it's weird because it feels great and it's something I've worked so hard for, but it's not the end goal. Like I, I don't just, you know, quit because I made the 53 and there's a whole lot more I would like to do now that I have the open door to do it. Uh, so, yeah, for now we'll say 53, but hopefully there's a, a better answer coming. Favorite app? Uh, Spotify. <laughs> Spotify, <laughs> the music man. That may be your new nickname for me. Is that all right? That's the all music right. man making sweet music on the field. Uh, and the superpower you'd like to have, if you could. Um, time travel. I think it would be so cool to go back and see how different things were in different area, eras. And um, First stop. What would be questions. your first stop? I would love to see the dinosaurs, honestly. I just read Jurassic Park to tie it back into the books. I would, and I, Again, I need a button that can like get me out of there immediately, too, if I need it. Uh, I don't really want to mess around with them, but I would love to see what they were like and then you know, come back to modern times or the 1900s or who knows what. Very interesting stuff. Oh, again, the 53 is a great accomplishment, but you got your, your journey is just beginning in that realm. Yeah, thank you very much. It's always a pleasure to come on the show, and hopefully there's a lot more as I continue to progress on this 53. Absolutely. Go get the Rams. Uh, maybe a little chip block and Aaron Donald on the way out to catching a touchdown, huh? Got it. All right. Jesper Horstead, our guest. <laughs> we'll continue on. We'll talk with NFL Network's Andrew Siciliano. A little sneak peek at the Rams when we're coming back next here on Chicago Sports Radio 670 The Score. This segment of Bears All Access is brought to you by CDW. People who get it. With Tom Thayer, I'm Jeff Joniak. In this version of Bears All Access, we're taking a look a little sneak peek, the appetizer, if you will, for the L.A. Rams, the countdown to kick off on September 12th. On this night, we bring in our good friend and former Chicago radio star, Andrew Siciliano, now a superstar for DirecTV and the NFL Network, kind enough to join us because he's also the preseason television voice of the L.A. Rams. Andrew, thanks for joining us. What would you learn about the L.A. Rams in the uh, preseason? Ah, uh, guys, uh, it's tough to learn a lot from the Rams in the preseason. First of all, you're way too kind. That was quite an introduction, and everything I know I learned from both of you. Um, as for what we learned in the preseason, um, I think the big question that remains answered, or unanswered, rather, because let me turn it that way, is is what does this defense look like? You're taking Brandon Staley's 3-4 from a year ago, which was the number one defense in football. You still have Aaron Donald. You still have Jalen Ramsey. You lost some other key pieces, John Johnson, Troy Hill, Morgan Fox, most notably here. And uh, you bring in Raheem Morris, who's been a Tampa 2, cover 2 guy, a 4-3 guy, and he's trying to put his spin on it. We had Jalen Ramsey on our preseason broadcast on the sideline during one of the games. When we asked him about it, he was rubbing his hands with this huge grin on his face when asked by my partner, Keep to leave, what his role will look like this year. They're going to move him around a lot. He's going to be inside, outside, nothing too, too, you know, earth shattering here, but they are very excited to see how this defense looks. But I think at the same time, there, there might be a little uncertainty as to whether or not they can keep up being number one in football. Hey, Andrew, if I was going to be the head coach of the Bears, I first thing I would do when I was getting my team prepared to play against the Rams, I would kind of explain the vulnerabilities and how we are going to attack the Rams. Since you've seen them, and if you were in that room, where would you say the Rams' vulnerabilities are at this point in this early season process? Okay, are we talking defensively here, Tom? Defensively, it's, it's what, whatever, easy. both off, offense or defensive. Like, what? Where, where do you think the most need for improvement is in the Rams? Okay, I, I would say defensively first. Obviously, you're running away from Aaron Donald, but that's far easier said than done. You have two or three guys there. You also have. Uh, yeah, rather you put two or three guys on him and then you try to run away from him. That said, I, I think depth on D line right now is definitely an issue. Ashawn Robinson um, is not going to be healthy for the first couple of weeks. He had his knee scope last week. So they're going to have some young guys up on the D line that perhaps you can take advantage of. Um, and they're thin at corner. They only have four corners. Now, when I say thin, Darius Williams and Jalen Ramsey um, are legit. After that, mm, you know, it's kind of a crapshoot here. Uh, but you also don't know what they're going to do defensively. Offensively, you have a new center. He's a familiar face. He's a guy that took a couple of years ago, but really has lost maybe the last year and a half as he's come back from an knee injury, and that is Brian Allen. Um, he, he has never been that stout, Tom. You could see that on tape far more than me. He has gotten stronger. 
really in the off season. And it was a big surprise that they moved Austin Corbett away from center. He was the starting right guard. They put him at center and everyone thought that was his job. And then they moved him back to right guard and put Austin Corbett at center. So you have a new center um, who's played the position before, but not the biggest center with a new quarterback here. And to me, um, that's a question mark. Now, Brian Allen, a local kid from Hinsdale in Michigan yep. State, so excited to see the local guys get the playing time. He is a uh, tough guy inside, no question about it. You mentioned the quarterback, new quarterback, not to us, <laughs> not in no, any way, shape, or form. All. We know everything there is to know about Matthew Stafford, and the fact of the matter is the man was not complimented very often with a running game. Will he be complimented with a running game in L.A.? Yes, he will, but that running game is going to look a little bit different than maybe they had planned a couple of months ago when Cam Akers, who, who they first firmly believe. And if you look at Cam Akers numbers in December and in the postseason, you could see that he was an ascending player. They firmly believe that he was going to be a number one dog. And then they lost him. And so they had to figure out what they're going to do. They love Daryl Henderson, but Daryl Henderson's had injury issues and they're concerned that they could keep him upright for 17 weeks. So they went out and they got Sony Michelle. Now Sony Michelle is going to play week one, but how much don't know. They love the fact that he's a one-cut guy, that he can get upfield. Um, but Daryl Henderson is going to get the first shot at it. There's also a rookie named Jake Funk from Maryland who's coming back from a couple of ACLs, and uh, and he has made the team. You're going to see him some on third down. They still are heavy outside zone. There was a thought that they were going to mix in a little more power this year. That remains to be seen, however, if they stick to that thought now that Cam Akers is out. The conversation, there's two two 39-year-old offensive tackles in this game. Yeah. I know there's a lot of conversation about the Bears' 39-year-old offensive tackle because he just came on board. What about your guys' 39-year-old offensive tackle? Andrew Whitworth, who turns 40 in December. Uh, he's back for one more ride. Um, he is a He's really a coach. He's a coach slash left tackle because he coaches Tom more than he practices. Sean McVay is nice to his veterans, whether it's Witt or a new guy like Deshaun Jackson. Uh, He's going to take care of you, and he's going to make sure he doesn't wear you down. Andrew Whitworth is really the assistant offensive line coach with the new guy, Kevin Carberry, who came in from uh, Stanford in the offseason. They are fine at left side. Eventually, he will wear down. They hope it is not this year. Joe Nopum, who they took a couple of years ago pretty high out of TCU, they thought to replace him, is the swing tackle, and he is waiting in the wings. But the health of this offensive line is a, if you want to go back to the first question, a big question mark. If they stay healthy, and right now they are, if they stay healthy like they did in 2018 when they were there for the entire season, they think they can put together one of those seasons. If they don't, then everything you asked about the quarterback and the running game, I think, comes into question. Andrew Siciliano, our guest here from NFL Network on Chicago Sports Radio 670. The score, this is Bears All Access, a little sneak peek at next week's Bears-Rams opener. It's one we've circled, we've been excited about. Yep, a number one defense a year ago, and I I noticed that uh, all the writers and the analysts are are pegging this game as uh, a Bears offense with a new quarterback and some question marks on the offensive line and a new defensive coordinator against Matthew Stafford and the number one defense in football. That's all last year, and you've uh, noted that already, that there are changes that could affect that ranking. But you cannot affect the the kind of player, the wrecker that Aaron Donald is. So give us a Bears perspective as they match up with Aaron Donald and the Rams. Listen, you, you guys know this far more than me, is that the Bears offensive line is, even if healthy, a question mark. Um, when not healthy, even more so of a question mark. I don't know that there's any interior O-line who can walk into a matchup with Aaron Donald and go, yeah, we're good. We're good. We can handle this. Yeah, I mean, the idea is you, you get them upfield and, and you run away from them, you trap them, I guess. But it's far easier said than done. There's a great piece that Jordan Rodriguez did in The Athletic a couple of weeks ago about Sean McVay's favorite plays that Aaron Donald has ever made. She sat down with him during training camp in Irvine. And he put together a cut-up. And, and his cut-up, hardly any of them were highlight reel sacks that people see, you know, in commercials. They were plays where he took th- two or three guys to block, where he freed a teammate up to get a sack, where he set an edge when, when you know, he, he looked like a superhero. Uh, I don't know that you can really contain him. He is 
the most disruptive defensive force in football. Andrew, the, the personality of Jalen Ramsey, it's kind of abrasive to anybody who's on the other side of the Rams. Does he fit in good with the new defensive coordinator, Raheem Morris? Is it something that, that Morris is going to have to look to embrace or is he going to allow him to have the freedom to have the t- same type of, you know, um, on the field personality that he shows? Raheem's not messing this up, and they are they are BFFs already. Tom, uh, the Rams love them some Jalen Ramsey. I, I think the biggest stink of the off season was who's going to get number two when they allowed the jersey changes, and Sean McVay had to give it to Robert Woods. Um, because of his seniority here, and Jalen switched to five. That was the biggest Jalen Ramsey controversy we had here. Uh, he is going to have the freedom. They're going to move him around a lot. Uh, Brandon Staley put him with, in what he called last year the star position, and I think the one thing from Raheem Morris that we've gotten is he, he does not want to screw up the success they had a year ago. And uh, you'll see Jalen in the slot sometimes. You'll see him, in essence, playing linebacker sometimes. And you will see him traveling when need be if there is a wide receiver that warrants it on the other side of the ball. Um, He is the ultimate chess piece, like a queen on the board that can go anywhere and do anything. And they are not afraid. Like uh, Sean McVay joked last week, actually it was Raheem, I'm sorry, joked last week, that he thinks that if he had to, he could put Raheem, uh, he could put Jalen Ramsey at three technique. Those are his words, <laughs> not mine. And I and I think he meant it when he said it because yeah. he was comparing him to Rondi, Rondi Barber, who he coached obviously when he was young, and he said he was the greatest nickel of all time. And not to say that Jalen Ramsey is simply a nickel, but you can play him anywhere. That was his comparison, and said, you know what? I I bet you you could play him at three technique. All right, Andrew, a final question before I let you go. Appreciate the time as we look at young corners. Jalen Johnson, we assume Kendall Vildor, and Duke Shelley, the three nickel and outside corners against guys like Cooper Cup, Robert Woods, Van Jefferson, and the speed demon veteran Deshaun Jackson. As you look at that matchup, what would you say? I would say that be wary of the deep ball and that last year – the one thing that eventually doomed Jared Goff, uh, his fault, um, uh, a bit, he didn't react well to pressure when the line broke down. Certainly um, everything was condensed because they didn't have a deep threat last year without Brandon Cook. So that was not his fault, but last year they do, or this year I, I misspoke this year. They have that deep threat. They have Deshaun Jackson back. Sean is going to stretch the field. And when Deshaun Jackson did practice this year, um, he got behind people, not only against the Rams, but he got behind the safeties for the Cowboys. He got behind the safeties for the Raiders as well in joint practices. He still has that extra gear, and they are going to take their shots. Um, the jet motion's coming back. 2-2 Atwell, probably some of that. And, Jeff, like you and I talked about last year at one point, uh, nobody blocks like Robert Woods, and no one likes to block like Robert Woods. When he comes in motion, he is looking for someone to crack back on, and he revels in it. So uh, circle those guys. Sounds like a great scouting report. Andrew, thank you so much. Andrew Siciliano from NFL Network, and you'll catch him on DirecTV. Quite busy starting Sunday. Andrew, appreciate your time. Thank you. All right, have a good call, guys. Love you. Thank you. Thanks, Andrew, Andrew Siciliano along with Tom Thayer. I'm Jeff Joniak. Let's take a break. One more segment to go with Tom Thayer here on Bears All Access on Chicago Sports Radio 670 The Score. Final segment of Bears All Access with Tom Thayer. Jeff Joniak here on Chicago Sports Radio 670 The Score. We're brought to you by IGS Energy. Thanks again to Andrew Siciliano. He gave us a great breakdown on the Rams. He does their preseason games, obviously. And and that leads us to what this Rams offense will be able to throw at the Bears. Uh, Tommy, uh, you've already taken a peek. Uh, and one of your intriguing things is, is how those routes are run against the Bears secondary with Matthew Stafford. Will he have time in the pocket to extend the the routes to go deeper on that secondary, or will the pressure be so much that it'll be check down Charlie? Right. You know, I, I think one of the things you have to understand is the athleticism by Matthew Stafford that the Bears know well. He's not the type of guy that's going to be able to run away from pressure. It's going to be about the decision he makes with immediacy at the line of scrimmage. And now if the the coverage can match the pressure up front, because I do believe there's vulnerabilities up front on the Rams that the Bears defense is going to be able to take advantage of. 
you got to put Matthew Stafford in that hurry up frame of mind. Because if you just allow the speed of the Rams to run uninterrupted downfield, you could have a tough time containing that type, that type of speed. So it's going to be about the position, the uncomfortable position that you put Matthew Stafford in. Well, he challenges everybody. He doesn't care how tight your coverage is. He will try to force it in there. So therefore, this defense, which wants to take the ball away, will certainly have that opportunity. That is the case with Matthew Stafford. He trusts himself significantly. Now, safety to Sean Gibson gave us a sneak peek this week as well, breaking down this Rams offense. That's why this is the most difficult team when it comes to a discipline standpoint because, man, sometimes you may see guys on film, the ball, of, it'll be a jet sweep here, another one here, and you'll see a guy just stuck. You don't know where to go. Um, and you got a guy like Robert Woods getting a reverse running 20 yards up the sideline. Your eyes got to be huge. And that's the, sad, that's, the, that's the hard part about it because we're taught as defense, man, you want to play fast. Play fast, the fast team, fast, physical. But sometimes, man, you see too much, see something fast, man. That's a big play waiting to happen against offenses like this. So definitely you got to have your eyes trained and I, I understand what you see and not play too fast, as crazy that may sound, because you, you, you're you taught, man, uh, to, to the, the fastest team, man. Uh, defensively, those are the most effective teams. So, you know, when you look at that, man, you got to really just take a step back, slow down, understand what you see, and then react. Um, so I think that that's going to be huge for us, man. Obviously, we got a two-week head start compared to years prior, man. So we are definitely excited about that opportunity, man and we're doing some things to get us ready for that. All right, so he brought up some interesting things there with eye discipline, Tom. Uh, you know, they want to be a fast offense. They'll do a lot of jet sweeps. There will be a lot of motion. But you got to somehow get through all that window dressing and slow the game down a little bit from your eyes as a member of the secondary because they're going to want to play fast and make you start quickening your pace. But maybe you don't. Maybe you just... Calm it down so you trust what you see. You know how they always talk about the quarterback, oh, in the second or third year of the system, things are slowing down for me. Roquan Smith may be calling the signals in the huddle defensively, but Deshaun Gibson is the quarterback of that defense on the back end. He's going to have to make sure that everybody is in pre-snap proper position. They understand who their responsibility is. And then if someone may be on the wrong page, Tashawn Gibson has to make up for that. So he is going to have a lot on his plate. And if he can slow it down, that is going to be a huge important role for him next Sunday night. You know, 25 interceptions in his career as an undrafted free agent out of Wyoming. I appreciate his journey and what he's done. He's thrilled to be on the team. He's a wonderful spokesman right now. He uh, really gets in the detail and speaks his mind. And he's very high on Jalen Johnson. We heard that earlier in this offseason. He brought it up again. He says, you watch... Mark my words, it's going to be that kind of year for Jalen Johnson. And what a great stage on Sunday Night Football on September 12th, a week from Sunday, how that will all play out. You know, I'm high on Jalen Johnson too, Jeff. You know, we got to go out to practice every day at training camp and watch his daily improvement. And then we had a chance to meet him in person for an episode of Bears All Access a couple weeks ago. And then you get to have a chance to meet a guy face-to-face. Everything he presents himself is professional. And I think that he had a lot of pressure put on him last year when he had no training camp and was the starter immediately. And I think he's living up to the expectations so far set for him. And he cherishes the opportunity. All right, we only have about a minute to go, but we heard Andrew Siciliano explain uh, how difficult it is to deal with Aaron Donald as a disruptive of a player that there is in the NFL and has been over the last three to four years, certainly a two-time Defensive Player of the Year winner. Take a look at it from an offensive lineman perspective on what this front five is going to have to deal with with that guy and the rest of the bunch. You have to respect him, but you can't fear him. Whether it's back in our day going against Reggie White or Keith Millard when he was defensive MVP of the league, somebody is going to have a difficult assignment every once in a while. But there's a lot of double teams, and you got to be physical against them. Matt Nagy's got to call the right plays against Aaron Donald to kind of put him on an island of a double team. So you can't make this about Aaron Donald and the Rams. You got to make this about the Rams defense as a whole. Can't wait to break it down even further next week, Tommy. That's going to wrap us up. Appreciate your time. Also, thanks to our producers, Dan Barilli, Jordan Tredup, and the folks at The Score. Thanks to our guests tonight, Jesper Horstead and Andrew Siciliano of NFL Network. That'll do it for us. Thanks for listening, everybody. This has been Bears All Access on Chicago Sports Radio 670 The Score. Good night, everybody.